Hey everyone, Zach here. Now at the 11th episode of Voltron Legendary Defender and the first season finale, the Black Paladin. First up, personal thing here, a little bit of a late shout out to Keith and the Red Lion. Throughout the vlogs, I've made sure to have at least one of every lion and Paladin color. Ironically, I guess I wore a black shirt far too early in the season. I didn't look ahead to the episode titles. <laughs> and admittedly, Keith had sort of a standout scene in the previous episode, so that would have been more appropriate then. But better late than never. Five at least five different shirt colors for 11 episodes. Not bad. <laughs> anyway, on to the episode. Good season finale, very good. I think I'll basically just give a very basic plot rundown and then sort of go over the cool, intense Dramatic stuff throughout it in no particular order. <laughs> yeah, following on directly from the last episode's cliffhanger, they realize they have to get Alora back, even with the imminent threat of Zarkon due to them arriving on his doorstep in order to rescue Princess Alora. So they figure. Basically, warp the castle into Central Command territory from a safe spot, try to pinpoint her location, form Voltron to take down as many active battle cruisers and fighter craft as they can, free Alora, get back to the castle, form a wormhole, and get out of there. And, predictably, it is, well, predictably for the viewer, unpredictably for the characters, it really does not go as planned. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Let me get some of the hero stuff out of the way first. Uh, Keith also gets some cool stuff to do in this one. Fights through space in the red line quite a bit unveils again the toys have this I noticed it on the toy first and it had a name but I don't know what it was again this like three pronged I guess what well, looks like it could function like a rail gun but I'm guessing it's sort of just like another cool energy cannon thing, but a lot stronger than the lion's mouth can generate in a single blast. Put that to good use, wrecking the station, sort of slicing through enemy spacecraft. Cran gets a cool hero moment, being able to fire a blast from the castle, he even said he'd been waiting 10,000 years to do that against some Galra enemies. Let's see. Voltron's offensive capabilities are impressively ramped up in the opening battle forming blazing sword while both hands are smashed through the hull of a battle cruiser so it helps it slice through it more easily using the sword basically as a I guess sort of like a heated wedge it rams a few battle cruisers in, in short sequence making them all explode quickly forms the shoulder cannon 
uses a lot of the scatter blasts to eliminate several ships in a matter of seconds. <laughs> like they do not want to mess around. They <laughs> for this battle they just want to get things over with as quickly as possible. <laughs> But then the Gaura demonstrate quite a few crazy things. Through apparently some cooperation with the Druids, Zarkon can basically freeze Voltron in place and forcibly separate it. You know, like right after the opening battle, it's all the individual lines from then on. I'm guessing through Shiro's arm can partially hack the Black Lion and basically force it into a tractor beam in an attempt to seize it. Uh, Witch Hagar has a couple other abilities that the previous episodes Druid didn't demonstrate. Telekinesis, she's able to stop Alora right in her tracks and lift her above the ground a bit. Illusion casting, she can create several fake copies of herself in order to disorient her enemy. Seems like she can also, at least temporarily, create sort of like a nightmare kind of illusion space to really confuse and potentially frighten the other person. Zarkon's own combat abilities are on another level. Outside of his sort of regal, well underneath sort of his regal armor, he's got his own Paladin-esque battle suit, enhanced strength, integrated jet boosters, and unless he has some kind of invisible helmet, apparently he can safely breathe in the vacuum of space. <laughs> and he also has what might be a Bayard? It's very multifunctional, handheld weapon, but it can form a colossal chain whip, several different kinds of swords, a cannon, all with the capability, <clears throat> all with the capabilities of damaging or at least stopping a Voltron Lion. At least under the current piloting capabilities of the Paladins, he notes that, I mean, understandably, people like Keith are only using them to a fraction of their potential. But it was crazy for him to take, go toe to toe with an enemy that's hundreds of times his size. <laughs> But they do start succeeding despite those many setbacks. Shiro helps get Allura out. Black Lion is reclaimed. Keith and the Red Lion manage to get off to safety. And then the end of the episode happens. Hopefully right around the time this premiered, or even before that, hopefully the news came that it was renewed for a second season. Because if it wasn't, oh man, would the viewers have been losing their minds? <laughs> they managed to depart, they, tr they prepared to 
reboard the Castle of Lions and form a departing wormhole with Alora back on board. But the solar shield, I believe is what they called it, is still in effect, making them unable to leave. But it's soon shut down because, I guess unknowingly to them, there is a turncoat in Zarkon's like inner circle, basically. I don't think he was given a name, but I think he was one of like Pryrox lieutenants. I'm not sure his voice actor. He had a little bit of dialogue, but I'm guessing he'll be in the next season quite a bit. Unless they really want to keep him mysterious. <laughs> they open a wormhole, they're just about to leave. But then through another cooperative effort of the druids with Hagar at the center, they unleash some mystic blast upon the portal just as our heroes enter it, making it dangerously unstable, apparently scattering the castle and each of the lions to several points randomly throughout space. Also a quick little character detail that was mentioned that really opens up possibilities. When trying to seize the Black Lion, Zarkon said it would return to its original paladin. Is Zarkon the original Black Paladin? <laughs> like was Maltron originally kind of a cooperative weapon amongst several civilizations and the Black Lion managed to go back under Altaian control just before or just as Zarka was getting really power hungry or is it someone else <laughs> that Zarka knows of Again, we'll find out at some point, I'm guessing. <laughs> so yeah, that was the season finale. <laughs> really ending on a strong note. Um, to sort of sum up the overall season, my thoughts on it, I really enjoyed it. I know I guess I kind of watched it wrong. It being a Netflix show, it's... Overall recommended to be binged. But even piece by piece, it was interesting. And it was very enjoyable. Impressive action through just the individual characters and all the CG stuff. The lions, the spacecraft, the row beasts, even though there were only two in this season. It's bounce of sort of drama, heart, comedy. The tone was overall nice without any erupt shifts. Um, minor complaint on characterization that maybe they'll improve with the next season, especially with how the premiere is likely to go. Overall, they are... Everyone is distinguished quite well. They have... And they've shown plenty of strengths and weaknesses. Their own thing. But outside of a little bit of extra development for Shiro and Pidge, and recently Alora, they're... There hasn't been a lot of time devoted to who is this person, who is Lance, who is Keith, who is Hunk, who is Koran, and so on. But I'm guessing with the next season, at least the opener, having them scattered, they'll kind of shine a spotlight on 
them a little bit more individually. I mean, it's made sense throughout the season, even in the opener. They've often been a group, so they kind of have to bounce off each other, reveal little by little. But overall, it's, it's a really good show. I'm glad I've finally gotten around to watching it. Okay, so I'll be taking a short break in between these videos, like I said at the first one. Scheduled to be three days in between this episode and the season two premiere, because then one episode per day per, for that, and then a three-day break after season two. I'll be able to start the season three vlogs right as that season is released on Netflix. So, see you then. Onward to episode 12, very soon.